Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. In this video, I'm going to be testing and evaluating the Evans GMAD Clear. Now, this is a bass drum head that has similar construction to some other bass drum heads that they make. They make an EMAD as well. We'll get into what that all means. And I want to install it on this old Tama Imperial Star. It's a vintage drum. Uh, back in the 1980s is when I bought this. So it, it's an old drum. It has good sound to it still, but the head that's on there I'm not completely satisfied with, so I want to see if I can make some improvements. Bass drums, even of the same type, the same model, everything, can sound different even with the same heads. So this bass drum right here um, is exactly the same as this bass drum on this drum kit, and it even has the same heads. Yet, for whatever reason, this one sounds much better. It has a deeper, thicker thud to it, and I, I really prefer this drum. Unfortunately, this drum's marked up a little bit on the finish, so I, I don't put that on my main kit. And here's a third example of the exact same drum. This one has different heads on it, but again, it has a different uh, character of sound to it. So I point that out only because when we're trying to buy or evaluate a bass drum head, or any head for any drum, uh, you know, sometimes we assume that other people's experience will be the same as ours, and it may not be the case. I have a, a microphone here at the bass drum port, um, which will stay the same, and I also have a microphone inside the drum, pointed directly at the drum head from inside. So I'll record both of those on my DAW and um, apply processing like I normally would. So basically I'm going to make this bass drum sound as good as I can giving the Power Stroke 3 head and I'll do it as good as I can uh, using the GMAD head and we'll just compare and see how much difference there really is. So on the business side of things here let me just show you what the existing setup is. Um, I have a double bass pedal and like I said I'm using the Remo uh, Power Stroke 3 bass head. Inside the drum you see there's a little piece of green foam there and that is set up so it just barely kisses uh, the inside of this head and also on the other side, the resonant head. And that is just used for a little bit of muffling. Now, that's the current setup. My hope is to get rid of that once I get the new GMAT head. However, I do still need to worry about the resonant head and that's going to have too much ringing to it, I imagine. So I need to do something about that when I replace uh, or get rid of this uh, green foam. So we'll think about that. All right, let me give you a close-up look at this new Evans GMAT head. So it's a little bit different from a standard head in that it has the standard plastic mylar, you know, head surface in the middle, but around the outside edge here, there's a dampening system. And that dampening system gives you three different options. There's this plastic retaining ring around the outside edge here and one option is to just have that retaining ring and nothing else and that will give you a certain amount of dampening and then inside this retaining ring is a foam insert which can be completely removed and that will provide additional damping if you wish and then there's a third option which is another foam ring which just has more foam to it it's going to give more dampening so you have three different levels of dampening uh, that you can use now the main difference between the GMAD and the EMAD and, and other uh, varieties of the same system is that the head thickness can change. So some are thicker, some are thinner, or they may have two heads. Um, and either of those two heads may be a different thickness. So that's the main difference. They all use this retaining ring and this foam system, but they have different uh, thickness of head or numbers of, of, of uh, plies. Now here's a close-up of the edge of the head, and you can see that Evans is using a metal ring here. Uh, if you go way back, you know, Evans was kind of famous for making their hydraulic heads, and they didn't have a metal ring on those. They had kind of a, an epoxy system, which could be kind of ornery and, and uh, troublesome over time. But this is just a standard metal ring, and I think that's good. They do throw in what they call an EQ patch, which is just protection uh, from the beater. And, uh, but they give you a single, and I need a double, so I bought my own, but they do throw the single in. All right, so I'm getting this new head installed. I wanted to give you the opportunity to see the inside of the bass drum and my microphone set up. So this is the microphone right here pointing directly at the head, and then you can see coming in the port there is the other microphone. And I will change the balance of those microphones or maybe turn one completely off depending on what I'm after, but it gives me the options. And this is that piece of foam I was talking about so it just, you know, touches the edge of the head, but I need to get rid of that now. I'd like to get rid of that now. But now I do need to come up with some way to, you know, dampen that resonant head from the inside so it looks nicer. 
And I, I may end up, I'm not sure what I'm going to do actually, but I got to come up with something to do there. All right, I have the new uh, G-Med head on. And one thing to think about when you're tuning, a lot of times I'll take my finger and just push it against the edge here to tell if one lug is not as tight as another and you can see you could feel looseness in the head well you can't do that because of the dampening ring being in the way uh, not a big deal but something to work around now on the resonant head what I ended up doing was using a self-adhesive uh, weather flashing foam uh, which you know I I'm not sure is, is the best solution but it's what I have on hand right now so the resonant head has some dampening but not a whole lot and I think what I might actually end up doing is going old school and sourcing a felt strip to install on that head because I think that's kind of what I need. But for right now, it's dampened enough where I can get some uh, use out of it. And this new head right away when it's tuned up, it, it's definitely got a very tight uh, thud to it. it. It's not a boomy thing at all. It's definitely a thud. And I notice it's got a little bit more a high-end attack to it than the other head. Now, I haven't put, um, you know, that little pad here to protect the head from the beaters, so that may cut down on that attack, but right out of the box, it's got quite a bit of attack, and it's definitely more of a thud than a boom. I've had a chance to play with this a little bit. You know, uh, it's interesting. It, I definitely had the exact same tuning as I had before. And I know this because uh, I tuned my another bass drum in the room to the exact same pitch, all right? Um, so when I just tap on it very lightly with a stick, the pitch of this is exactly the same as it was before, all right, with the old head. However, I, I think you can hear on the recording, you get a much deeper uh, response from it which is interesting and that's what I wanted so it has in the room without the recording gear and everything it sounds um, deeper more of a thud than a boom and it also has more of a almost a papery attack to it now I'm using the middle ring if you will in other words it's the of the three levels of dampening you could have I'm in the middle and that seems to suit it pretty well the one thing I will say though is the resonant head continues to um, to go on a little longer than I would like. So I do need to mess with that. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this. I didn't dislike the Power Stroke 3, uh, but this has a little more, you know, thud to it that I like. So, so far, so good. And if you want to try this on your own, now you know what to expect.